Ladies and gentlemen, Toshiko Mori. Hola, es que me casco. It's an honor for me to be here, and thank you for inviting me to your wonderful, beautiful city of Bilbao. And I want to especially thank Jishan and Utsi for organizing this amazing event, which is in an inaugural festival. There are a lot of festivals going on, but it's really difficult to organize it and start it. And for them, uh, I have to give them a huge amount of credit because they involved the entire community, including the politicians, mayors, and businesses, so that this event is an inclusive event. And I really think it's a wonderful event. I, again, it's Kerry Casco uh, to everybody here. Uh, it's my honor. Thank you. And as uh, being uh, presented, I'm an architect. and. I have an office, a traditional office, Toshiko Mori Architect in New York City. You could go to the website T Mori, T M O R I, uh, T M Architect dot uh, com. But uh, I started this a Vision Arc, which is a think tank two years ago, just to think through global issues. Now, going back, I have to tell you my personal background. I'm a Japanese citizen. I live and work in New York. I teach in Cambridge. And I come from a family of international traders. My family, the one were very few allowed to trade while Japan was shut down and isolated. And my father was international trader. In fact, he loved Spain. He was here. and. Uh, he made a policy for Japanese corporation to contribute its profit to build cultural institution in its locale. So he's in heaven now, but he will be probably very proud of me I'm speaking in this particular platform. Um, I don't speak Spanish, but uh, idea that I come from this global background, it's important for you to understand why I have come up with this particular idea. Uh, in fact, it's very interesting because Alvin's presentation is very focused on local and very focused on the idea of Hong Kong and China. But then it, there is a universal global platform which is implied. And he even used the word platform for future of design. So my think tank, Vision Arc, really tries to uh, build a platform. And this Vision Arc is really not a nonprofit yet because it's not a charitable organization, but more of a social entrepreneurship. It's a hybrid practice I'm uh, putting together. So uh, it's a research organization. Now, um, I will present several projects that we are working on right now. And our first project is called uh, Design Blind Spots 2050. This was commissioned by a Singapore a Minister of Culture. And this is how, in fact, I met Jishan. So this was two years ago, but it's been evolving. But design blind spot is where we came up with design systems to identify design blind spots. And when you look at global issues, you will see how isolated everybody is, including design. In fact, that we are so focused on making things. And uh, in fact, in 2011, as architects, we are really focused on build environments for designers, really what I call hardware, the projects or goods and how to deliver it. But what we are trying to say by 2050 is that this is what we'll be engaging in and this will be the material of a design practice, meaning that instead of just looking at glass or concrete, steel or plastics as a material, if you think it's through, to feel that geopolitics, government, energy issues, finance, infrastructure. Now, we are starting to touch on many of these issues already, uh, including building by transportation, migration, tourism, biodiversity, animals. You have a big animal sitting in front of Bilbao there, <laughs> a flower dog. But 
in a sense, how animals interact with designed uh, society, um, climate, ecology, water. So in a tangential manner, we already touch on this, but these are essential to enlarge our influence globally. And also my idea is to elevate design discipline to a higher uh, range of power structure. In a way, what I'm trying to say is to define that a lot of times as a design profession, we are given problems to solve. As Alvin said, traditional conventional way of conceiving architects and designers is that we are a problem solvers. But what is quite critical is identifying problems. If no one identifies a design, the right problem, no matter how good a solution is, provided, I think, with our education, we can design anything beautifully and brilliantly. But if the problem is not identified or designed properly, no solution can actually address the real problem. I think we really globally are having that. And only thing we are ending up doing is we are at the bottom of the food chain. We are really resuscitating and promoting mistakes, perhaps, made in higher chain of bureaucracy. So it's something we've been noticing. It's very idealistic, utopian, but that's something. And then as a process, one of the issues which is going on is that in the global politics, everybody's operating silos. There are people interested in energy security. There are people interested in terrorists. But in fact, they are very interconnected. And how are they interconnected? As a design profession, there are two major uh, contribution we make, which is power of imagination, which we know we have very, very rich, sometimes fertile, sometimes um, unconventional, a lot of times out-of-box imagination. That's our talent and our gift. And the second is power of observation. As designers, we have ability to observe anything for phenomena and always questioning how to repurpose, reuse, how to make things work. Those are two powerful tools we have, which nobody else really have. And we are trained to do that. We practice that way. And this particular exercise is to tune in the power of observation to find interconnection of what you think seemingly not related issues. So what we did is uh, my think tank and my interns on the, in the summertime, this is really grassroots effort, is to run through the internet. And we came up with randomly listed in these sectors, built environment, agriculture, there are tons of predictions on internet. By 2011, this happens. But then all these predictions, some, some of them are a little bit questionable, but the ones we picked are backed up by scientific data or statistics. But then there's a lot of them, and it's really interesting to list them all. And then the question is, how are they related? How can we interconnect them? And then if we start to identify, we can locate what you call a design blind spot. And this particular process of exercises can be used by anybody for any body of information. So one of our work of Vision Arc is creating a new platform, new way of thinking, a new way of practice design, perhaps unconventional, but with a large problems. Because if we like it or not, we have to face it. The next generation, it's going to be a world. And to training designers for next generation, um, as a practitioner and also I'm an educator, we really have to figure out how to deal with these issues. So, Interconnections is a Vision Nux platform, how to find the uh, design black spot. And the third thing, the good thing about it is, if you find a design blind spot, that means no one else is operating. It's an incredible opportunity for designers to enter into, which means you can create your own job base. So global problem being joblessness, I'm seeing so many areas where we can do work.